the way you program is actually a lot more important than if you are using steroids because a steroid using bodybuilder will use the drugs to stimulate protein synthesis whereas a natural trainee has to use the session itself to trigger that protein synthesis. Now, nutrition can also trigger protein synthesis to some extent, especially if the food is high in, in amino acid and protein and or trigger uh, an insulin response. However, for the bulk of the protein synthesis that will lead to muscle growth, it is accomplished via the training session. So, so what happened is when you do the resistant training session, you are imposing a mechanical stress on the muscle fibers. You're stretching them under load. That, that actually causes muscle damage. It will also activate something called mTOR. And, and mTOR is the trigger that will initiate protein synthesis. And it is the act of stretching that fiber under load or having it stretched under load that has the greatest impact on activating that mTOR that will lead to protein synthesis. During the recovery period, provided that you had the right stimulus in the gym, you will actually increase protein synthesis significantly higher than it normally would be, allowing you to not only repair the damaged muscle tissue, but also to rebuild that tissue thicker and larger. And of course, to, to be able to grow as much muscle as possible, you need to trigger that, that ideal protein synthesis. And regardless of your capacity, creating too much muscle damage can actually lead to less muscle growth, maybe even losing muscle. People, when they're dieting down, subconsciously they believe, you know what, I need to train more. First, because they want to, they want to get ripped. So they think, well, if I do more reps, if I do more sets, if I do more exercises, I'm going to cut faster because I'm burning fuel, which is not totally incorrect. But the downside is that that causes more muscle damage that also increases cortisol. So now you're causing a bulk load of muscle damage and you are in a state, nutrition-wise, not to be able to repair the damage quickly enough. So I really believe that most people who actually lose muscle when they're dieting down, do so because they train too much. The real reason why you can get bigger and stronger with heavier weights and less reps, and that strength is not increased as much when you're doing higher reps and lighter weights, is simply because of neurological adaptations. The heavier you lift, the more force you have to produce, the more the nervous system improves. It improves your capacity to recruit muscle fibers fast, but more importantly, the capacity to make those fire twitch rapidly. That is the number one thing that is uh, involved in force production. Also, it will be, you become better at intramuscular coordination, making all of those recruited fibers work together. The Golgi tendon organs are little organs in your tendons. Their job is to protect you against yourself. If you produce so much force that your body thinks, you know what, I'm going to tear something. My tendons might be ripped apart. So to protect you against yourself, the Golgi tendon organs will stop force production. Okay? And, and the more you desensitize them, when you lift and you train, you lift heavier weights, your body realizes, quote unquote, you know what, I'm handling high force production and nothing is tearing apart. So instead of being super conservative, like the average person who doesn't train might be able to use 30% of their maximum strength potential before it's shut down. And the more you train, you can push that up to 50, 60, 70%. Uh, an advanced or international level Olympic weightlifter or powerlifter might be able to use 80, maybe 90% of their potential. 